Tough game. Yeah. Uh, morning, folks. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm uh, joined by uh, Lisa McLeod, my energy critic, and Jim Wilson, our house leader, uh, to talk about uh, the fact, quite frankly, that jobs are leaving uh, our province uh, left, right, and center, and this government seems to, to fiddle uh, while Rome burns. Just we heard more job losses this past week, and all we get from the Liberals is more fluff legislation about you know, where you can smoke in the province of Ontario. Where's the jobs plan? You know, two months ago, I did a press conference where I talked about how we'd agreed with Premier Wynne to clear the decks, uh, to pass some uh, legislation around uh, who can access tanning beds and water heater salesmen. She said these bills are standing in her way of putting forward a jobs plan. So two months ago, we agreed to clear the decks so she could bring, bring forward her jobs plan. Two months later, there is no plan, and we've lost more and more jobs, including Heinz and Leamington, CCL Industries in Wellington County, and we lost what was a project of the century, what could have been what the oil sands are in Alberta, the ring of fire with cliffs walking away from the table. So clearly, we need to change. The promise that Wynne had to actually bring forward a job plan was never fulfilled. And cliffs, I mean, that was the capper. And this could be what the old sands are in Alberta, what potash is in Saskatchewan. The ring of fire could have been for the province of Ontario, and now that investment is going elsewhere. We actually brought forward a plan. We put our plan on the table on how you could actually capture the value from cliffs. And if the Liberals had bothered reading it, and we put it out months and months ago, we could have been moving forward with that project. Instead, it's not going to happen. So two months later, I regret that I took the Premier at her word. I regret that I trusted her to bring forward a jobs plan when she clearly had no intention of in doing so. Now, look, I'm used to Liberals saying one thing and doing another. I'm in politics. I see that, sadly, far too often from the Liberals. But more importantly, I regret what it means for jobs in our province. I regret what it means for the multi-billion dollar Ring of Fire project that would have brought jobs in northern Ontario to Toronto, to Hamilton, to Kitchener-Waterloo. And I regret what that means for the 800 people who lost their jobs at Heinz Manufacturing in Leamington, at CCL Industries. I regret that fact for the 38,000 people who have lost well-paying manufacturing jobs since Premier Wynne took over that office. It's time for change. It's time for a new approach. My team and I, we've got a plan to actually put people back into good jobs, the kind of jobs you can depend on, it's good wages and benefits, where you don't have to wait from temp job to temp job. You can actually get married, buy a home, raise a family. That's the kind of Ontario I want to build. We're not going to get there with Kathleen Wynne's broken promises and empty jobs plan. Jim, you want to add to that? Uh, I would just say, um, you know, in addition to, uh, to uh, the loss at Cliffs, as a former Northern Development Minister, that is a real disgrace for our, our province. Uh, uh, Cliffs was prepared to put in $3.3 billion plus in terms of um, investment. It's a $60 billion worth of uh, minerals in the ground there. Um, it's our next uh, oil sands in a positive way and uh, would have been a, a real boost to the economy. And once Cliffs is gone, I'm sure many of the other potential investors will, will leave too. It's a loss opportunity. To what Tim said in terms of, um, you know, we cleared the decks as House Leader. I was asked by Tim to do that, and uh, we did that. In fact, uh, by this time next week, all of the bills that we promised to get through will have gone through this process and have been voted on. Um, so we more than lived up to our part of the deal in an unprecedented way, cleared the decks, waiting for a jobs plan. Um, I regret, as House Leader, uh, and uh, as Tim has said on behalf of our caucus, we regret ever trusting Catherine, L Kathleen Wynne to do what she said she was going to do, and that's bring forward a jobs plan if we cleared the decks. And the thousands of people that are laid off almost on a weekly basis now, another 170 jobs at Penetang just a few days ago, uh, in addition to Leamington and all the rest, uh, they must be terribly, terribly disappointed in this government and feel terribly left, at, left, uh, left out in the cold before Christmas and uh, let down. Um, I don't know what House Leaders is going to be like in the future because you can't trust these people to do what they say they're going to do. Lisa? Well, thanks, uh, thanks very much, Jim and, and Tim. Um, I think it's fair to say in Ontario, if we weren't in a job crisis before, uh, we certainly are now. You can't open a newspaper in Ontario without uh, learning that a major factory in Ontario has closed down or at least a local business. No one in Ontario um, thinks that uh, this government is doing what it should be doing in order to retain and even attract jobs. And my colleagues have just pointed out, and in particular my leader, 
um, the importance of what cliffs would have been to Ontario in, in northern Ontario. Um, specifically, I'd like to say this. I think most people understand that energy prices are far too high for ratepayers, that they're far too high for our businesses. No one can tell me that uh, that did not play a significant factor in each of these closures. Uh, I'd also like to say this. For a Premier who pretends to be so compassionate, why did it take her so long to go to Leamington? 800 people are out of a job in a small town. That's going to wipe out other industries as well. And instead of actually going to Leamington when she should have, she donned on the Lululemons and created an ad running uphill in Dufferin County. I, I think that's wrong. There needs to be a team in place in Ontario that understands the crisis we're in. I think the right leader for the right time is Tim Hudak. We've demonstrated we have a plan, not only on electricity prices, but also with, with respect to labour and getting jobs and, uh, and the economy back on track. And we trusted this Liberal government to bring forward a jobs plan this fall, and they refused to do that. And that's why I support what my leader has said, uh, that we're going to have to change the team that runs the province. Thank you. Thanks both. Happy to take any questions that you uh, may have here today. Problem here that they just haven't built the damn road yet up to the uh, the ring of fire. Like, isn't isn't that really the message for the government? It's just like just get on with it. Just you know, build a friggin' road, and and then the economic development can finally follow. You know, it's a government that is a slave to process. Um, listen, they're damn good at consultation. They're rotten at creating jobs. And what you need is a premier who actually understands the importance of job creation in our resource sector if we want to see the ring of fire become a reality in the province. We laid out that plan. We laid out that plan it's some August. time ago. Uh, which basically have a minister in charge to clear the path to make sure that you share resources with the First Nations in the area to help address some of the abject third world poverty conditions in remote First Nations communities. They would actually clear aside all the obstacles uh, in the path and you lower taxes and get energy under control. We've got a comprehensive plan that could have made that project a reality. I mean, I, this could actually have been what the oil sands are in Alberta. Instead, we've kissed it goodbye because of the Premier, quite frankly, who's lost in a sea of job losses and doesn't know what to do about it. Tim, we had this plan this morning to bring the Buffalo Bills to Toronto. I was wondering if you thought that was good economic development for the city or whether you would support such a move? You know, uh, as a lifelong Bills fan, I'm a little concerned of um, them trying to be living on a prayer with uh, Bon Jovi. Um, Bad pun there, I guess, eh? All right. I got a bit of a groan from, uh, from the audience. Uh, look, uh, I, I, you know, there's, there's, um, as a uh, big sports fan uh, and as a, um, somebody who uh, has a lot of interest in politics, uh, there are more rumors probably in sports than there are in politics, so if there's a serious plan coming forward. Um, but I think we actually need a comprehensive jobs plan that helps open our environment for investment across the board. We brought a plan to help bring 300,000 manufacturing jobs back to our province, to make us open for high tech, to make us open for mining and resources. So in focus my plan, if something actually develops, we'd be glad to comment on it further. We haven't seen any of the specifics of the, the bill. Fan, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> 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 the wrong kind of football. I want the Vikings to come to Toronto. That's fine. Uh, I know we haven't seen the specifics of the bill that the government was talking about last week that they plan on introducing today in order to forever ban the burning of coal in Ontario. But do you have any preliminary thoughts on on this? What, what, what's the if it, even if it's symbolic? What's what's the symbolism behind it? In, from your well, listen, show me the bill, and and my energy critic, my environment critic, will be glad to, to talk about it. Um, look, let me point something out, though. I appreciate you bringing this up. So let's think about this for a second. We lost. 800 well-paying jobs, middle-class jobs in Leamington at the Heinz factory. That means that ketchup has been made in Ontario for, what, 100 years? Well, it was going to be made in the States from now on. And what was the government's reaction? They brought forward a bill to talk about smoking on patios. At a time, the ring of fire that could have been like the oil sands to Alberta, it would be like that for Ontario. What do they do? They're more interested in getting a pat in the back from Al Gore, meanwhile, who championed these high-energy policies that are costing us jobs. they got to get their heads on straight. They get a plan. Enough with the fluff. Let's actually focus on bringing good jobs back to rebuild our middle class. Is, is the coal bill again? I'm not going to talk about fluff. Look, if they bring a bill forward. My, my, my clinics would be glad to talk about it. I actually want to see a plan. Like I sat down with the premier, so I'm getting a bit exercised here. We're even closer than you and I are today. Two months ago, I agreed to clear the deck on all these fluff bills around you know when you can access a tanning bed or water heater salesman. I agreed to do that. And she said she bring forward a jobs plan. Two months later, we've lost more jobs. Two months later, they're bringing now new fluff to clog the legislative agenda. I've got a plan. I'm ready to go. So let's get going and let's stop the hemorrhaging of jobs in our province. 
Tim, what are you up to today with the Niagara South Hospital? And, you know, I, I believe that the best thing to do for South Niagara when it comes to the health care is to build that new state-of-the-art hospital. I believe that because, as the expert, Dr. Kevin Smith, pointed out, it actually saves the taxpayer money instead of keeping the existing four sites open. You'll have $10 million in operating savings. You can hire more nurses and attract specialists. It saves money. It's good for health care for Niagarans. So what's not to like about it? Let's get going. But here's, so we're bringing forward a bill today, or sorry, a motion in the House that basically says to the Liberals and the NDP, it's put up or shut up time. Are you actually going to back this project that South Niagarans like, or are we going to kick this down the road and weaken health care in the Niagara Peninsula? I'm tired of the other two parties playing games with this. It's an important project, and me, considering it impacts my family, my friends, the communities I grew up in, it's personal. I'm going to fight for it. Does the NDP think that they can keep the, uh, the smaller hospitals open and build, build a, a, a new facility at the same time? Is that possible? I think it's unrealistic. I think it's irresponsible, and I think it's old school politics. Um, look, the, um, Dr. Kevin Smith was appointed by the Liberal government to look into the Niagara Health System. And while I've been known to criticize the Liberals from time to time, it was a good pick. He did a good job. And he points out that building uh, one new regional hospital in South Niagara and consolidating the other four actually is going to improve health care. It's going to attract a lot more specialists and it saves the taxpayer dollars. So my point of view is let's get on with it. Sometimes uh, in life as a leader, you, you come to a fork in the road. And you can choose option A, keep all the existing sites open and put a lot of money into care and maintenance for older facilities, or choose a better option, option B, and build that new modern facility that's good for health care. Leaders make decisions. Leaders make choices. I know the path that we're on. That's for the new hospital. Sadly, when Andrew Horvath comes to path and road A or B, she chooses both. Can't afford it. It's not realistic. Last Liberals follow, following the advice of the guy that they appointed to do it. It's an excellent question and a good one for, for, the, for the Liberals. Um, here's the interesting thing. They face a similar situation in Windsor. And in Windsor, they agreed with some speed uh, to put money into a planning grant to bring two hospitals into one. Meanwhile, before that, almost a year and a half ago, Dr. Smith put his plan on the table to consolidate four hospitals into a brand new South Niagara site and it sat on the, middle, on the minister's desk. So you asked me why haven't the Liberals reacted to this after almost a year and a half? I think because they believe that Ontario ends at the Burlington Bridge. I think what happens in Niagara is totally off their radar screen. I wouldn't be surprised during the by-election if they said their, their new candidate suddenly convinced the minister <laughs> this is a good idea. But who's going to believe that? when after a year and a half, they left it on the shelf. Uh, just Last for a second. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talked about this a couple of months ago. A small Toronto company, Media Mix Interactive, gets a contract with the MNR, quashed during the McGuinty government. Hudak hasn't done, or not Hudak, sorry. <laughs> the new Wynn government hasn't done anything about that since then. It was a $40 million claim that was against the government that's gone up to $100 million. It's, it's courts approved just in September right now. This company invested millions to have jobs in Toronto, an Ontario company, and then that contract was ripped from underneath their feet by the McGuinty government, and Erzetti has done nothing to correct this. According to the Liberals, this is in the courts. What would your government do if it got, it, it, once it does become the, the leading government here in this province? It, uh, how do you correct a situation like that? And how do we bring back jobs to a, a company that was doing really well and something for the government? Well, well, first and foremost, whoever gives the best quality at the best price, you get the contract. Right? I mean, you have to be responsible with taxpayer dollars. And what happened here was liberal insiders got a special deal. Now, this is the way that Kathleen Wynne and Dalton McGinty always approach the issues. If you're a liberal insider, you got the special inside track. The problem is that keeps costing everybody else more and more money, more and more taxes, and fewer jobs in the province. So what do we do in the long term then? What do, how do we help this company out now? If it, if it was your government, if you were in charge right now, this company is, is in a couple of months, it's going to disappear because it's been litigated to death. Would you settle out of court with them? Would you try to help them out to bring them back to life? Yeah, I mean, listen, I'd have to get some more details on exactly what's happening in, in the courts, but this just seems like the, the typical liberal approach, sadly, that they give an inside deal to well-connected liberals and taxpayers and people who try to follow the rules are left paying the price. And just like we saw with the gas plants, the liberals try to cover this up and it costs us hundreds of millions of dollars more. My best solution for this to stop happening? Change the government. Thank you. If you become Oh, sorry. Sorry. If you become Premier, how quickly do you think you can get a, a road built up to the Ring of Fire? Like, is it, you know, within a year or something, we'll, we'll see shovels in the ground or bulldozers in the floor or whatever to get that road or railing up there? I make it a priority. And, and look, um, this seems like the ideal public-private partnership. 
because when you actually build that transportation corridor, you're going to be untapping extraordinary wealth in the billions of dollars. So part of that revenue that comes in and from the private company's profits as well, pay for that road. It also benefits the First Nations community, so the federal government then, I'd make the pitch that they should contribute as well because you can finally give road access to communities who have no road access aside from an occasional ice road. I'd point a minister to actually clear the decks, make sure you can actually get this job done, and as a classic example of public-private partnership that's going to create jobs in our province, I'd make it a priority. Would you, would you go with the road over, over the yeah. rail, sorry, oh, one more. to the Ring of Fire? Um, would you, which, which option would you think is... Um, would would you go with? I mean, that's been yes, a bit of a battle between the rail, rail of on um, all the road. Which option would you um, go for in the Ring of Fire? Yeah, I mean, basically in the paper we said whatever is actually going to actually to bring those jobs uh, into reality and bring that or uh, south and the job creation not only north but south in Ontario. Uh, so you look at you look at what's going to have the biggest difference when it comes to job creation and investment, and you choose that path. And instead of continuing to kick it down the road postponing decisions, you actually make the choice and go forward. But it's clear you need the transportation corridor to get that ore to market. Chromium, nickel, copper, awfully heavy. You can't fly it to market. Right? So was it a good game or what? <laughs> in Saskatchewan. <laughs> or a, rider, a, rider, a, rider, a, a little heartbreaking, right? It was great, it was great to see the Thai Cats uh, there and especially Look, look, there's a lot to be happy about, right? A young team, they had to play on the road, considering they're playing in Guelph all season. So the fact they got to the Great Cup, they beat the Argos in the Eastern Regional Final, proud of that. Look forward to next season. Did you manage to watch the whole thing? Uh, I did, actually. I <laughs> <stuck> <laughs>